Hey everybody, it is time once again to do that thing that we do at the end of every year. These are my top 10 favorite movies of 2015. Now please keep in mind, I do not have time to see every single freaking movie that comes out. So if there's a movie you were hoping to see on this list that is not on here, there's a pretty good chance I just haven't seen it. I've heard a lot of people say really good things about The Revenant, but I haven't been able to see it because my city was not one of the lucky ones to get that limited Christmas Day release. In fact, as far as I'm concerned, The Revenant is a 2016 movie, so maybe you'll see it on next year's list. Also, please keep in mind that this list is purely subjective. This is just the top 10 movies that I personally enjoyed the most. It probably won't match your own personal list, and that's okay. Now before we get started, a lot of people like to complain about how Hollywood is out of ideas and they have to keep relying on remakes, reboots, and sequels. I have made this complaint myself many a time. And yet... See, I almost feel like a bit of a hypocrite now because I realized after I made this list, I'm not kidding, half of the movies on here are in the remake, reboot, sequel category. Half of them, including the top three. How did this happen? I just, I don't know, but here we are. Maybe Hollywood finally figured out a formula for remakes and sequels that works, or maybe the problem all along wasn't remakes and sequels, it was just bad movies. Nah, that'd be too obvious. Well, anyway, here we go. My top 10 of 2015. Number 10, It Follows. This is a movie that will probably not be on a lot of people's top 10 lists. Some people liked it, some people didn't. I personally thought this was really well done. It's got a great old school horror feel to it, a creepy atmosphere, a very frightening villain, and it definitely had me looking over my shoulder a few times to see if I was being followed. Probably not the sort of movie to watch if you're the paranoid type. Number nine. The Peanuts Movie. Also a movie that will probably not be on a lot of top 10 lists, but I really don't care. I thought this movie was outstanding. It was a great tribute to the work of Charles Schultz. It brought back all these characters that I know and love from my childhood. I really liked how they took CGI animation and still made it resemble the old school animation that these cartoons were known for. And maybe it's just the nostalgia talking, but a lot of movies based on nostalgic properties fall flat on their faces, like Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, for example. So Peanuts must have done something right. Number eight, The Hateful Eight. See what I did there? It's the eighth movie on my list and it's called The Hateful Eight. And it's also the eighth movie from Quentin Tarantino. So it's like eight, eight, and eight, which is, um, it's a lot of eights. I was going somewhere with this. This is another solid film from Quentin Tarantino. Beautifully shot, fantastic cast, not a bad performance to be seen. It does have a few problems here and there, which is why it's not higher up on the list. It takes a while to get going, but once it gets going, it is fucking intense. Number seven, Kingsman, The Secret Service. Two Samuel L. Jackson movies in a row and two very different roles from him. This is definitely Samuel L. Jackson at his silliest. I never thought I would see him play a part like this, but man, he did it so well. This is a great tribute to the spy movie genre. It's got action, it's got thrills, it's got comedy, it's got cool gadgets, and it has the best use of pomp and circumstance ever. Ever. Number six, Mission Impossible, Rogue Nation. And now we have two spy movies in a row. And surprisingly, neither is James Bond. Sorry, 007, I love you, but you didn't make the cut this time. This is a movie series that kinda got off to a rocky start, but their recent entries have really knocked it out of the park. It had a really good story, some entertaining characters, some fantastic action sequences, and it was just a lot of fun to watch. This is exactly what a spy movie should be. Number five, The Martian. Ridley Scott returns to form in a big way with this one. This is beautifully shot. Matt Damon is fantastic in this movie. I love how optimistic his character is in spite of all the adversity ahead of him. And I love how it tells a great story using real, honest to God, science. Oh, I'm sorry, I mean science! Number four, Inside Out. 
In my opinion, this is one of the best movies Pixar has ever made. I love the gorgeous animation and the great attention to detail, and these characters that personify these emotions and all this other stuff that's going on in this little girl's head are just so well done. The cast did an amazing job, and it's just such a wonderful, inventive way to tell a story of a child growing up. I really, really like this one. Number three, Creed. So this guy, Ryan Coogler, comes along and says, you know what I wanna do? I want to make a new Rocky movie. Okay, why not? And somehow he ends up making what is possibly the best Rocky movie since the original. I don't know how this guy pulled it off, but I am so glad he did. The story is outstanding, the fights are all very well done in and out of the ring. I love the camera work in this fight. That single take for that boxing match was just incredible to watch. Michael B. Jordan did a great job as Adonis Creed, and Sylvester Stallone just killed it as Rocky once again. I will never get tired of him playing this character. Ever. Number two, Mad Max Fury Road. The action movie to end all action movies. Holy shit. <laughs> This was an adrenaline rush from start to finish. It's got great action, great stunts. So much of it was done using practical effects and it all looks amazing. Tom Hardy did a fantastic job taking over the role of Max from Mel Gibson. And Charlie Theron was just brilliant as Imperator Furiosa. But I think we all know the real star of this movie, the Doof Wagon. I want my own Doof Wagon. I don't even know what I do with it, but I want one. Just imagine driving to work in one of those things. Heavy metal blasting, this guy with a flamethrower guitar just spewing fire on the side of the road. Oh, what a lovely day. And finally, my number one movie of 2015, the movie I enjoyed watching more than any other movie this year. It is a return to form from a classic franchise that we all know and love and knocked it out of the park. I think you know what I'm talking about. Of course, it's Vacation. No, of course not. It's Star Wars The Force Awakens. What else would it be? Star Wars is back, people, and it's back in a huge way. I am just so happy that Star Wars feels like Star Wars again. We got all these classic characters that we know and love, plus some fantastic new characters. I love Rey, I love Finn, I love Poe Dameron, I love Kylo Ren, I love BB-8. That droid was awesome. This has easily the best acting I have ever seen in the Star Wars movie, from the old guard and the new. Awesome space battles, awesome lightsaber battles, great use of practical effects whenever possible. Lens flare was kept to a minimum. Thank you, JJ. All in all, it was the most fun I had watching a movie in 2015, and it definitely deserves the number one spot. And now comes the time where you get to tell me what you thought. Do you agree with this list? Do you disagree? Do you think I'm a stupid hack that doesn't know what he's talking about? Go ahead and post your comments. You know you want to. But whether you agreed or disagreed, I hope you at least enjoyed the video, and until next time, may the Force be with you.